Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. What's up, everybody? I'm Chris Stefano. And I'm Sal Volcano. And this is Hey, 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 Babe. Um, so yeah, dude, I just feel like Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. You can't you went over a yeah, dude over hey babe. <laughs> That's it. The thing is, yeah, I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you. Still buzz from you, last do, night, so you're gonna get it all thrown at you. Do you um? Do you do uh? You, uh is, would you just say yeah, dude? You ever do yeah, a yeah? Would you a yeah, dude? With anybody? Bobby yeah. Kelly, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. You know what, dude? I say yeah, dude. Or you know what I've been doing a lot lately, and I gotta shake it off. I've been calling a lot of people guy, but like, guy. but not like you know. I just be like, hey, what's up, guy? And it's just strange. You, yeah, guy sounds um a little bit like um passive aggressive. Right. Uh, if you say it to the wrong person, like, I don't know, guy. Guy. You know, yeah. like, uh, guy. It's like yeah. you're casting them off. I tell you what I always hear, and I I, I think I might have said it as a teenager, it had a, a little bit of, of a popularity run when I was little. But, like, I, I, I wish I could pull this off. I wish I could be. But it, it also can seem disrespectful, too. Son. What's up, son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. not like that. That sounds like you're my friend. But, like... Nah, son. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, son. Sometimes, son, people see that as like a sign of like, I'm your superior, maybe, or something like that. Right. You know, dude. What up, son? The word dude has been around since the 1880s. I would have never thought that the word dude. I thought dude Who came dropped out. a dude when they were going for well water? It was a new word for dandy. An extremely well-dressed male was a dude. Wow. A and, and dandy meant an extremely well-dressed man. So a man who paid particular importance I to how he appeared was known as a dude. What, like a metrosexual? Yeah. That, yeah, the cafe society and bright young things of the late 1800s and early 1900s were populated with dudes. Wow. A w- extremely well-dressed man. Yeah, so you're a dude. So right now I've we're been, not dudes. No, I've been a dude in my lifetime, maybe. And, of course, I just want to give a shout-out real quick to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Kansas City Chiefs. Hell of a game they played. Shout-out Patrick Mahomes. Great kid. Listen, I got stand-up dates coming, okay? ChrisDComedy.com. We just put a big one on sale today, October 23rd, the Fox Theater, Foxwoods, Connecticut. It's my first big theater. Thousand-seater, baby. So go to ChrisDComedy.com. Get those tickets for the October 23rd Foxwoods date. Right now, today, to the end of today, if you use the pre-sale code FOX5, pre-sale code FOX5, you can get tickets early. They're selling very quickly, October 23rd. And then we got Providence in July, Eatontown, New Jersey in August, Nashville in October. We got September dates, November. We're in Boston. We're all over the place. ChrisDComedy.com. Thank you so much. Oh, well, I feel like the new dude does wear athleisure. That's I feel right. like this is a way. You texted me last night. You said you're wearing your lemmies today. Yeah, I said I'm going to wear my lemmies because they're also... What I like about Lululemons is they also double as fat pants. Shout out Lululemon. Yeah, shout out Lulu. They uh, double as fat pants. They do. Yeah. It, wh- anytime you get elastic in that waist. What do you got on right now? Nikes? I do have on Nikes. Uh, I had on a. I was going to put on my Lemmies. Shout out Nike. Yeah. I was going to put on my put on my Lemmies, and I wore them um, to the drive-in movie theater last night. Right. And I got a little dirt on them. Let me ask you something. The drive-in movie theater. You went to it last night. You had a good time. I, you know, you said the movies weren't great. But what, yes. what can you do? You're okay. Thank God. Wait. We got to cut that part out probably because I'm not telling that. <laughs> got it. So what you just heard was something that was that could have indicted us both. So welcome back to the show. Uh, we edited that part out, and you guys will never know what we said. But <laughs> Keep the whole thing in. Just drop the audio out and just come back with zero detail and have us laugh. And I was. All right. So do you think, though, like I understand in, you know, in the middle of the pandy, we got to do what we got to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I have never heard pandy. Pandy, yeah. They used to call it pandy. Now they call it pood. Pood. <laughs> so, 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 pandy. So, in the middle of a pandy. We're in the middle. It actually takes the edge off yeah. a little. Yeah. You know? I just remember, like, imagine the heat of it, in the thick of it, like April 5th. Yeah. Cuomo was like, so, info on today's pandy. <laughs> yeah, that's what it, it is. Everyone would have been like, oh, maybe I'll go out. You know, maybe like I'll if go you out. Say, yeah, because if you say, like, the 19... 19- 18 Spanish flu, the horrible pandemic. But if I said the pandy of 2020, you'd be like, that must have been fun. Yeah, pandy. It's a pandy. No, yeah, everyone had some downtime. Yeah, we had a pandy in 2020. What yeah. can you do? But do you think that, because you've experienced it now, you would continue to go to drive-in movies even when the pandy is over and movie theaters are back open? Or do you get, 
now why driving movie theaters eventually just closed because they're kind of it's nostalgic, but it's not that fun. I will tell you. Yeah. I've only been to one drive-in in my life. I was young. It was a double feature of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and Gremlins. Wow, it's nice back-to-back. -back. I, I remember it vividly because it was like so unique to me. Never went again. Never thought of it again. I knew they still existed. I didn't know to how much. Right. Now I'm finding out during the pandy that they are scattered about. Right. Because people are doing comedy. I almost did comedy there. I am doing comedy there. Yeah. Um, Cape Cod. Oh, well, it happened already. It, it probably happened. The shows went well. The show went amazing. Yeah. It is sold out, by the way. Yeah, of course. So yeah. um, it did sell out. Um, but no, what was I saying? Oh, so uh, last night rejuvenated my faith in it completely. It's not a novelty thing. Interesting. It's like if, if I was lived near it, it would be a regular thing I did. Okay, so now how does it work? You go, do you watch it from like your car? Like you sit on the hood or everything's through the radio, you got to stay in your car. Okay, so I don't know what non-pandy rules are. Right. Pandy rules are social distance cars, so they, they set up these stanchions, and you have to park your car in between them, and that's like the meter that you're away from someone six feet. Right. You're allowed to get out and sit in front of your, or on the side of your car, distance from someone else in chairs, or stay in your car. Uh, if you, everywhere on the property is mask, and if you leave your, your box, it's a mask. But if you stay in your little area, it's no mask. Okay, so and you could you could choose to sit in your car and listen to it, which most people did, but I'd say thirty percent or thirty five percent sat in lawn chairs, which is what I did. And they rent you, they give you a little rental radio for five dollars, and you tune in to like eighty nine point nine on the FM dial. And, and you listen with headphones, or you listen for your group on like on, but like you hear it because everybody's kind of like some people have their windows down, some people don't. You hear so you movie. kind of hear it in the air. But it was a beautiful. It was a beautiful night. It was actually a clear night, so it was just stars and everything. And so the one I went to prior, I remember when I was little, I had a, a screen that way and a screen the other way. So it was picture a huge lot, and half the cars facing that way, and half the cars facing the other way. Got it. So I would turn. Now that I think of it, I wonder if it was a double feature or I just Gremlins was on the other one. Right. Um, but this one had three different movie theaters, uh, three different screens, all playing at the same time. And it you depending on what d double feature you went to, you went to a different lot. Interesting. Yeah, went to a different lot. Yeah, the well, the one I was in was the best lot of the three. It had a full on forest with like fifty foot trees behind it, even bigger actually. And where was that and, one? And, and that screen was in front of that wall of trees. It was in Warwick, New Jersey. Shout out to the Warwick Movie Theater. Shout out Warwick. Yeah. yeah. Also, Warwick, Rhode Island is a very uh, interesting town. Really? Yeah. Well, it's just like colonial town. This place was. Gorgeous. Like the last half hour getting to it was just huge lakes and, and foliage. So, this and is the one you went to yesterday in Warwick, New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, yeah. And this is the one. That, so, the, you're saying the one that you went to last night's in front of the trees, the beautiful trees. Beautiful. Yeah, I got to go out there. It was nice. We went, it was like they showed some horror movies. <coughs> For me personally, I thought they were duds. Right. But they got really good high ranks on Rotten Tomatoes, which is like a ridiculous. Like, it's so. What about snacks so and popcorn and stuff? They have a stand, they have food, they have all that stuff. You got to distance online, wear your mask. And that's it. And that's it. Now we're, so we pulled up an article, and again, we're not sure when this episode is going to come out, so who knows what the hell uh, the world uh, is up to now. But the UK is doing their first socially distanced concert shows, and we have a picture of it up right here. And it actually looks like you can get some people in there. If you do it this way, there's like these little pods that you can have, looks like three to four, three max, I guess, seats in it. And this field looks like it's holding a thousand people. Yeah. That's yeah, going to be mean, the way it's done. I mean, if it wasn't distance, you probably could put... Probably 5,000, maybe 8,000 people in that space. Well, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, if that's what it is, it's what it is. I, I mean, I'd sooner have that than not have any. You guys can do, you You guys, you could get back on tour like that. Yeah, maybe we could. I don't know what that takes. Jeez. For that. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. It looks like a hell um, of a production. Yeah. Wow. It's like they're standing on, they don't have their own little, like, like risers. Yeah. Their own little, like, uh, do you know what you, do you know how what? do you rock out? You know what's one of those things, because Sal, you're like, the, it's one of those things where it's like, because you, you know, have, have done so well and you know so many people. I, I don't know that you know the 1975, the band. Right. You only probably only know them through me. Right. But if if I'm thir I'm going to be 36 by this time, come 36, on my 40th birthday, I'd like, if I'm not at a, if, you know, hopefully we're all at, you know, we're all just keep moving up. But on my 40th birthday, if I can't do it myself, I'd like for you to somehow get in touch with the 1975 <laughs> and have them, Play me a song. If it can be in person, great. If not, some type. Just, just telling you now, right on August thirteenth. All right. 
that, that for my 40th birthday, I had like something with the 1975 using whatever you, the only favor I'll ever ask is God pull willing, some strings with that. God willing. Yeah. Uh, there's still a band, uh, you know? Yeah. Because you, you have a few years to go there. Yes. But, That's uh, why I said four years. I'm not saying my right now. pledge to you. My pledge Whatever to you. Whatever you could do. I've heard of them. I know them. I, I, I don't know them in, as in-depth as you. I Anytime anyone speaks to them, it's highly. Um, I, I imagine, I, from what I've heard, I really like them too. I appreciate listening to them more. I had more time, but yeah, we'll we'll figure just this out. Just saying, the 40th birthday gift. Just you know, <laughs> yeah, 40. That's what I'm gonna we'll do. Because I've never yeah. I've never asked Sal for anything, but that, I'm just asking him for that. Maybe maybe the yeah. maybe they're on tour. We go to them. Yes. Get the VIP ch- seats and yes. maybe see if we can meet them and stuff like that. I mean, uh, who am I? Sure, I don't know who I am. No, but, but I'm just saying, you know, if, if maybe it, maybe if one of them in the band happens to have yeah. on well, the road on the road, maybe they turn on the tr- the, 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 the basic cable a lot. Listen, do what you got. If you got to call your co-star Paul Abdul and she does it, then she does yeah. it. Just yeah, get yeah. it done. Shout out Paul Abdul. Great in the movie. Shout out Paul Abdul. Shout out great at the movie and, and great at the after party. Paul Abdul, just a great person. Isn't she great? Great person. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to get her on dinner party. Oh, oh, so she she would come. Oh, wow, that's amazing. No, she would no, because we do it all from home. Okay, so she like, I, 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 we tried to. Uh, yeah. she, well, she might have been on already. All right. Oh no, wait, no, this no dinner party. No, yeah, no. It's all confusing because <laughs> like, sometimes we do it in real time and sometimes we're taping ahead, so you never know. But let me tell you, Paul Abdul, um, I had such a crush on her in like 1990. We all did when yeah. I was when she when she first hit really big with because she was already a very successful choreographer and dancer, but when she hit with her music. I was like, I, I was very smitten with Paul yeah, Abdul. Yeah, I love Paul Abdul. And uh, how in the world that, that, I don't know how life works, that like X amount of years later, I she's in a movie that I'm, I, 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 you never even can anticipate any of this stuff. But she was so cool. Yeah. We had long days, you know, like you end up sitting in, sitting there waiting to go and waiting right. for your takes and everything and in right. between takes and you just end up sitting there and you, you end up bullshitting with someone that we end up, you know, hanging out for Days and days and days and hours and hours and hours. Like a, a friend. Yeah, it's 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 just wild, and you just every you realize everyone's just human, you know. Obviously, but like, it just sitting sitting there just bullshitting about whatever. What uh, what'd you do this weekend? What you what'd you do? Me? Yeah. What I what I do? Um, yeah, because, no, because you told I was like I was like oh like we were talking and you were telling me what you were doing and I was like you gotta just I don't understand. Oh, you talking about visiting my mom? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's just a fascinating thing that I was like. You would never think that this is what Sal's mom. Oh, because I left you a message, and I and I left it as like I don't know. I just left it as as matter of factly. Yeah. But you call me back, and you're like, "That's the most insane thing." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, my mom. So I go visit my my parents this weekend, and um, my mom. You know, my mom lives alone, and um, I shouldn't even say that. Maybe she's gonna be like, "Don't tell people I live alone. They'll attack me." Sal's mom lives with actually four uh, Marines, four security four guards and, and six pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, the seven year old marine yeah. who, who killed the twenty year old hoodlum. Yeah, that's she, what it is. Yeah, that, she's actually his that, her tenant. That's who Sal's mom lives with. Yeah, yeah. no, my, my mom was my grandma, but um, she lives with members of ISIS. Yeah. So this weekend, I visited my parents. Right. My mom moved recently. Okay, but during all the pandy. Right. 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 So we had to get our furniture, all that jazz, and everything. Yeah. And. I went this weekend and I told her I would help her to get window treatments because this woman, for the last April, May, for the last four, four plus to five months, she didn't buy, like, she, didn't, she doesn't have blinds or curtains. So what she did on every single room in her house, on every single visible window pane, front door, bathroom window, everything, she taped wrapping. She taped, <laughs> she taped tissue paper, wrapping tissue paper. She taped it with scotch tape to cover every single window in her entire okay, so, house. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Her shades, her blinds are in the entire home. So if I knocked on the door. Scotch taped with tissue paper for gifts. So if I knocked on the door and she wanted to see who it was, she would have to remove she, the she, tissue she paper to, and then retape it. She has to pull the scotch tape down, remove the tissue paper, look, and then re-adhesive, <laughs> reapply the scotch tape. Was there any... Uh, <laughs> 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 was there another option that she didn't think of, or is literally that's the only option the lady had? Okay, so the first thing I thought was, what are you doing? And then the second thing I thought of was, this makes total sense, believe it or not. It 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 lets light in, yet it keeps privacy. The whole house you could do were probably 89 cents. <laughs> yeah, easy. And it's not a big deal. It's not cumbersome, and she peels it away when she needs to peek out, <laughs> and she puts it back up when she doesn't. And it's it's already cut into sections, 
And so I st- at first I was like laughing at her because it is ridiculous right. to live that way. Like, go on blindstogo.com. Shout out blindstogo.com. Yeah, shout, yeah. Go out, bl- go on, go yeah. on, and what do you say? Take a measuring tape and just say, give me a 36 inch vinyl set. That's what it Pay is. Pay you 10.99. Throw it up. Throw it up. But but it is pandemic. It's demi. It's pandy. It's pandy. pandy. The pandy. It's pandemic. It's pandemonium. And uh, but sh- so it, but it's funny when you walk in the house because it looks like a safe house. <laughs> it looks like she might like she might have to leave if she feels the heat around the corner in less than thirty <laughs> seconds. Like when she doing Niro, like she's like a wise man once told me, don't don't ever be prepared to leave yourself sec- thirty seconds flat if you feel the heat around the corner. Yeah, that's why that's how you ripped that line from the movie. Yeah, I, well, because what I did was I loved the movie so much. And me and my buddy Mike Paccio, we were younger. Shout out Mike Paccio. Shout out Mike Paccio. We, he lives he, he, by the way. Wow. He, Interesting. Yeah. Last episode, we talked about ghost stories. Yes, yes, yes. So oh, then I also just doxed him. But anyway. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> but uh, we loved the movie so much that we sat down, transcribed it which I used to do with the Jeffersons, and then we took the Pacino and De Niro part where they were sitting at the table, memorized it, and when we hung out, we used to act it out together. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. It was like in in, in fun. We weren't like being serious. Wait wait a second. So you used to, okay. When you say transcribed it, meaning you would sit down and write the words Pause the the movie, movie, write every single line for Pacino and De Niro when they sat at the table together, and we... And we memorized it, and then when we were together, we would just bust it out anytime we wanted. And you did that for the entire season of the show, The Jeffersons? No, I did that for Jefferson episodes with my family. <laughs> Wait, what? I did. I put on. I what? put on. I put on one man shows, acting out all the Jeffersons characters for my family when I live with my grandparents upstairs. And that's just, uh, every night on WPIX at eleven o'clock after the Yankee game, the Jeffersons would come on, and it was my favorite thing in the world. And so I used to write down the words, and then I used to re react it out for my family. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Do it's you a, have these transcripts still? I somewhere? have. I am a huge Jefferson's fan, actually. I have um, a lot of my fans know that, and so they've been so gracious as to send me. Like, I have like the pilot episode autographed by them, and a wow. bunch of other things. It's my favorite show of all time. I've actually never seen one episode of it. My favorite show of all time. It's, so it's you. So it's a must watch. I mean, I love it. It's, it was a time when television was different, and a lot of the sitcoms played like plays. Actually, right. you really felt the audience there, and it just like it was kind of like not as polished as sitcoms today. It was more raw, and it wasn't just about. There were hokey episodes, but they tackled, especially all in the family and Jeffersons are known. They tackled everything from race relations and 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 and, and everything in between. I mean, everything. They so they they had some serious, things. but it was like I don't know something that resonated with me. It was I was watch I would watch it with my grandparents too. And I think I just really love that time. Like I have nostalgia. a nostalgia for yeah. it. Yeah. But um but I so I used to do that. Your grandfather had the dent in his head? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh my Cuban grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh and then uh so anyway, me and Mike, we would transcribe we would transcribe heat and then we would drop it like in the drop of night. I'll tell you another thing I did that with. Yeah. You can't handle the truth. At one point I could without even blinking an eye recite the whole courtroom scene. How, you think you could get some right now? If you put it on, you know when you put it on, and then and so, you got me in a mode. I probably could, I could probably talk along with it. Let, I mean, it's been, <laughs> but it's what you. It, it's an interesting thing to see. It, okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. We're gonna put, we're gonna put on. You can't handle the truth. It's a two minute and thirty nine second scene. We're gonna let Sal watch it for a few seconds and see if it kicks in. What is the movie? You what is a few good men about? I've never seen a few good men. Yeah, it's a must watch. There's there's a lot of things. A few good that men. I, a few good men is there was like um. Here we go. You weep for Santiago and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury, the luxury of luxury of not knowing what I know. While tragic, save probably save lives. Comprehensible to you. Saves lives. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. <laughs> You're goddamn right I did. Oh, sick. I picked up on it a little again. Dude, even just that scene, I'm like, I got to see this movie. Yeah, I mean, that was the tour de, that was the tour de force scene, though. Yeah. That was like, you just kind of, you actually, you actually... That that was kind of a spoiler. That's yeah, because he is the code red, and I. <laughs> the, the whole movie was 
Uh, yeah, just I tell guess, me what's the premise. What's the movie? Uh, I guess <laughs> a mil- he plays a military superior who ordered an, an assault on a on a on a on a new office, a younger officer who he thought was a weak link, and that is like he's not allowed to do that. He's not allowed to order an attack. Did on the officer assault. get killed? Uh, no, no. But he was like it was traumatizing and what have you. I think he was just dis- unceremoniously discharged or wh- whatever. And then it went to court, and it was all. And this guy is one of the biggest, most hard ass. Egomaniac, really respected generals. He was um, in the army, and it was all about like. In the end, Tom Cruise was this like young lawyer that took this case on. I had to get him that was defending, that was like prosecuting, I guess, for him. And the whole thing was to. He ended up using, basically, um, uh, what the hell? Jack Nicholson's ego against him in the end. There, it was right. Little, it was a little like, uh, got it, like a little mental chess at the end. No, they, they well, they, it says Tom Cruise military lawyer defending two U.S. Marines charged with killing a fellow Marine at Guantanamo Bay. So they did die, although oh, no, no, oh, sorry. So he died, and Tom Cruise was defending the two guys that were ordered to do it. From got it. So they were on trial to go to be in trouble, and then he got got it. It was like it came it came from from an order, but they didn't want to rat that it came from an order, right? Think, something like that. I yeah, understand. no. There's so many movies <laughs> that I just haven't seen that like because what I'll do is instead of going home tonight and watching a few good men, I'll just put on Ace Ventura when Nature Calls yeah. for the <laughs> five thousandth time. No, I get that, which too. is stupid because I'm I could just watch so many new movies, but I watch the Ace Ventura movies or the Austin Power movies. Oh, on repeat, which Tom Cruise I is get, the most powers for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get, sometimes I'll just, like, throw on something I know. But I do like to, like, tick the boxes. Because we all have those movies that we haven't seen. Right. You know, I'm not sure. Like, there's got to be something I haven't seen. What's some, what do you think is the most famous movie you've never seen? Uh, if you have to guess. I don't even know. Uh, yeah, you got it. Top man. ten movies of all time. Citizen Kane, never seen it. Never watched Godfather, it. Godfather, never no seen it. Godfather, I've seen it. Dark Knight, I've seen Dark it. Dark Knight is top ten all time. Apocalypse Now, I've never seen it. Never seen it. Pulp Fiction, seen it. Seen it. Goodfellas, seen it. Psycho, seen it. Some Like It Hot, no. Never seen it. Shawshank Redemption, yes. Two thousand one Space Odyssey, yes. Never. I've never seen it. Alien, nineteen seventy nine, yes. But it's been since then. I've never seen Alien. Chinatown, yes. But I don't remember it. That's like a, these are like pic- things I remember my p- parents watching. Doctor it. Strange, Love, Lawrence of Arabia, Raging Bull. All of these are no's. No Strange Love, no Arabia. Yes, Raging Bull. You could borrow my DVD. Raiders of the Lost Ark? Of course. Of course. Taxi Driver, yes. yes. Vertigo, I've never seen. Yes. Casablanca? No. No. I've never seen one Star Wars movie. That's w- not one. You haven't seen, so you haven't seen The Godfather, <laughs> Star Wars, what did you just tell me? I've never Few seen. Few Good Men? Few Good Men. I've never seen one of the Star Wars movies. Do, do you go to the movies? Like when the movies, are, when it's not non-pandy? I, yeah, I, yeah, I go. I, I'm a big, big movie guy, but I'll go see movies that like you can't believe. Like I've seen the movie Anne of Green Gables 20 times. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Who of what? <laughs> Anne of Green Gables. What is that? A pretty woman. Pretty woman, of course. Yeah. But yeah. It's yeah. Anne of Green Gables. I've never heard of it. Yeah, Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> Why have you seen it? <laughs> then there's another movie, <laughs> Little Women. Um, I've heard a little. I've bit. seen that. Um, now and Then is a great movie. What, um, what movies are you seeing? These are just the movies I used to watch what with is my Anne family. Of Green Gable. It's just just about this girl Anne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Little House on the Prairie? Yeah, it's just Anne of Green Gables. She just lives on a farm. A bunch of shit happens. Hey, babes. Anne of Green Gables? Yeah. Oh, wow, they have a sequel. I know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, Anne of Green Gables is sick. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go to the theater. You don't go to the theater. Theater and say one for Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> I would have, but I think I was a kid when it came out. Yeah, I remember this scene. I um, I uh, also you know Little Giants. I remember I've seen. I saw that Little movie. Little Giants. I've seen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Intimidation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You use these for acid indigestion. What do you use them for? Intimidation. Indigestion. That's what I'm thinking of, right? Yeah, the annexation of Puerto Rico. Yeah. Um. Yeah, dude. I uh. I uh. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I, I like. I just keep. I'm one of those guys where I, I watch the same thing over and over and over again, and it bothers me. Same thing with books. I have, I'm not, I'm not lying, Sal, about 60 books that I've, each book I've read about 10 pages in each of them, and as opposed to, ju- and I keep saying, telling myself, don't buy a new book until you finish a book, and I just have all these books that I have half read 
Is that normal? Okay, so I don't know if that's a common thread with everyone, but I think it must be because you just described word for word. Every one of those books you see, and I have another closet full of books, I might have read cover to cover maybe 5% of them. And uh, I haven't cracked the page on more than half of them. And then the other 45% I probably read between, you know, 10 and 60 pages. Is that the same thing for you, Mike? Homeless Pimp? Homeless Pimp doesn't even buy the books, he said. Wow, yeah. I, no. I, and always tell, I always say the same thing. Don't get another book. Don't yeah. get another book. And then I'll just be on Amazon and I get a book. Somebody be like, you got to read this book. I'll be book. in the airport. I'll yeah. be like, oh, I like tactile. I want to feel it. Like, we yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a book. Stupid. You know? And, and I just, I just, I don't know what it is. N- never am I like, let me just open this book. <laughs> And say, you know, it's, it's terrible. It's just the way we're programmed nowadays. Well, it's called the mere exposure effect is what we've pulled up. There's evidence not only that we replay songs that we like, but also that up to a certain point we like songs the more often that we play them. So it's the same thing with movies. I think that says we like something more merely because we've been previously exposed to it. That's such a – That's I mean, I can get behind that theory. That sounds like, yeah, the mere, mere exposure to it. I like that they put mere in there. I think even when the... It's pand- like, that's the title of it. Like, the mere exposure. I think even when the pandy ends, you got to keep this hair and beard look. I think this is your look. You have, and this is no disrespect at all, but an, an 1800s type of look <laughs> and an 1800s type of face. And I've just realized that <laughs> now. Type of I've face. just realized that now that you got a face that's, that's for the 1800s. The way you look right now is if I saw you in some black and white photograph and like the broke. Union Army... Uh, you know, I would say this guy was a handsome guy for his time. And I'm not saying you're not a handsome guy now. You're a very handsome guy now. You know that, Sal. Yeah. But with the look that you got going on right now, very Civil War sailor, you look like you're in the, you look like you're in the Union Navy in the That's 1800s. Right. This and it looks fantastic on you. Really? Fantastic on you. I, no, I, I've been doing it straight back. I, and, That's and the look. I, and it's been, it's been feeling, again, it's been feeling Seagalish. So I did the part today. It looks great, but, but then I got the then I got the flip in the back, which doesn't go. This is like neat, and then this is not. To me, going. it's the look. I feel like I look ridiculous. I actually thought about it after like the le- like the parting look in my bathroom va- and mirror before I left it yeah. today. Yeah. I looked at it, and I was like, no, no. But, see, I, I love but it. what can you do? You have to you have to you have to go forth. You have to go forth. You have to forge forward. I love it. But the, the hair like this with the flip like this, it looks like I'm very confused. Yeah. And uh, I went to get my first haircut. Right. Four and a half months. Right. And he cut off a bunch here. And a bunch here, and it feels it feels better, feels better. What did Mariano Rivera say about your hair? Because you, you got to meet Mariano Rivera. Mariano, I got who's a friend of yours now, I, which is wild. Mariano, I mean, look, this is a guy that was like him and Jeter, I mean, the core four, right? Absolutely. New York baseball, five six rings each. Uh, I mean, a lifetime Yankee. P- this guy, we paid. We paid good money to see this guy play. Right. We, we were sitting on the edge of our seats most of the time when he was pitching. Of course. He was closing in big games. And he has a, a foundation, um, a charity foundation for children. And I, and I got invited to go to help with it. And I went and I said, am I going to meet him and become best friends with him? And it happened. And it happened. And that, yeah, and now Rivera's just, you know, and it's interesting. I think we're best friends. Because Rivera... I I I hosted this show in 2014 called Off the Bat. It was on MTV Two. I know this and MLB, and I got to take batting practice. Wasn't your off co-host um, Sway Fa- and Fat Joe? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. You took batting practice off Mariana Rivera. I got to actually step into Shut the batter's your box. Mouth. Yeah, I have it on my Instagram. I got to. I took. Well, that's another thing. Yeah, I golfed with him. Yeah, I very. Got, by the way, I don't know if you got to BS with him. No. Well, I mean, what a just a very sweet, kind, laid back, happy go lucky guy. Yeah. Like, whatever, whatever, you know, like kind of. Yeah. Put it off the bat, Chris DiStefano, Marion Rivera. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, we dude. Got, I got to do, do batting practice with him, and it was sick. What, was he just, was he just lobbing him in? Just, no, he was throwing, he was, he was throwing the ball. Were you, were you connecting? Well, here's what happened is I was in the batter's box with them. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, I saw like the, be- that's the video of it. Oh my God, yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, this is it. Yeah, I think so. Big fan, man. From Brooklyn, dad's from the Bronx. Dude, what were you thinking this day? It was first icon. of all, when you found out you were gonna do this, can we pause that one second? Yeah. Take me through this. You, you whose idea was it? MLB. Who pitched to? Major League Baseball pitched it to us as the show. They, I, I played in the Major League Baseball Celebrity All Star Game, and I got to do batting practice off Mariano Rivera. 
You're kidding. I me. swear to God. And then the celebrity also. What, were you nervous? Oh, my. I went 0 for 3 in a softball game in front of my whole family and 40,000 fans. <laughs> and popped out to the catcher. No. I popped out to the catcher. <laughs> yeah. Who was pitching? Um, um, was it Lob? Lob? Or Lob was it like. Well, yeah. The it was um, the guy from the Minnesota Twins. I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Jack something. No, but he, was he lobbing or was he doing like, you know, the professional college, like how they do that thing where they wind their own, but no, it looks like a cartoon? No, it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't, uh, yeah, no, it wasn't like lesbian softball. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How fast can the can can the lesbian softball girls? Uh, they throw, they get just into the seventies or eighties. Really, some might be lesbian, some might not. Let's be yeah. shout out, shout out lesbians, shout out lesbians, uh, shout out softball. I think they go uh, to the seventies or the eighties. Underhand, underhand. That's I think. Is it is that harder? Ninety miles an hour. What? <laughs> yeah. The fastest pitch on record was thrown by oh Eddie Finger. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> underhand. Underhead. What what unnatural body position do you have to do to throw underhand? That's got to be harder than throwing. Not, it's 100%. Def, it's, I mean, it's unquestionably harder to throw faster underhand. Do you than think, overhand. could a Major League Baseball pitcher come in and throw? I mean, a woman could then technically be a pitcher and just come in underhand and rock you. Yeah. That's possible. I, mean, I, I couldn't hit that when she's throwing. No chance There's I could no hit that. The and then they throw off speed curveballs, too. Um, I wonder if that, ha that messes with your body. It has to. All that stuff, all that stuff messes with your body. Like, I, I, I mean, I can't even wrap my head around where the control is coming from. If I got hit by a softball pitch, I'd hit the deck. I'd cry. Somebody'd have to walk me to first base. Could you, honestly? They should like, they, like these pitchers could be like law enforcement if they just. Yeah, in a sack of balls <laughs> to walk around the street. Like we're talking about, like you know, do you yeah. want to take away bullets? Yeah, you want to start the riots again? Bang. I mean, just those softballs are going at them like the. I mean, you almost don't see the the winding of the right. so tendonitis may tendonitis. happen in the rotator cuff. Well, there's a disease. There's a not a disease. A, a injury called little league's elbow. That's the it's called little league elbow. Really? I've had to tell grown women that you have little league elbow oh, when no. I was a physical therapist. Wow. Yeah, it's medial epicondylitis. <laughs> you remember? It? Yeah, and then tennis elbow is lateral epicondylitis. Wow, it's a yeah. fun. That's fun to say. So, yeah, <laughs> lateral epicondylitis. Lateral epicondylitis. Hola, mi nombre es Cristobal Ni Stefano. Guess where I learned that? Babel. That's right. I've been learning a second language, and it's Espanol. La pinguina. Babel's got 15-minute lessons that make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Here's the thing, okay? Because, you know, you heard about all the other ones, and I've tried them. I've tried all the other ones, too. But Babbel comes along, and what they have a teaching method that's scientifically proven to work. With Babbel, you choose from 14 different languages, Spanish, French, Italian, German, blah, 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 blah. And they have this speech recognition technology that helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. Because that's really what learning a language is about, is about your accent and how you're pronunciating it, okay? Because so if I came in here and said, hello, my name, you know, my name is Christopher, hola, my nombre is Christopher De Stefano. You said, this guy, he doesn't know Spanish. But then if I said, hola, mi amigo, mi nombre es Cristobal De Stefano, you would say, this kid uses Babel. And you can use Babbel too, and we got a discount for you. Guess what? All you got to do, get a three-month Babbel subscription. You know what we're going to get you? Additional three months for free. So that's six months total. You pay for three months. You get three months free. All you got to do, go to Babbel.com and use the promo code HEYBABE. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Promo code HEYBABE, extra three months. Babbel's the language for life. Listen, if you're a biological man like me, we're all looking for essential brands that are, have smart designs, and we just want to feel comfy, wumpy in our clothes. Got the place for you. Mac Weldon, okay? First of all, their products are about versatility. You're not just going to look great in Mac Weldon. Their underwear, socks, and shirts perform well, too. From working out, going out, going to work, on, or on a date, Mac Weldon's for everyday life. And I got to be honest with you, I have some products from Mac Weldon, and they're amazing. If you know me... I blow holes through almost all my boxer shorts because of my farts. Not a hole in sight in these underwear, okay? I also, listen, you know, I've been talking about athleisure left and right. Mack Weldon has great athleisure. They offer a wide range of customized fabrics that can, keep, that can keep up with you no matter what your day looks like. 18 hours, silver, air knit, dry knit, warm knit, all these freaking knits, okay? It's a knit knack shack in here. I just made that up. I don't know what a knit knack shack is, but it's, that's what it is, okay? And here, we got a deal for you. 
All you have to do is go to MacWeldon.com slash Hey Babe and enter the promo code Hey Babe. You're going to get 20% of your first order, okay? So that's MacWeldon, M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com slash Hey Babe and enter the promo code Hey Babe. 20% off, 20% off your first order, okay? 20% off your first order, MacWeldon.com slash Hey Babe. Enter promo code Hey Babe. I'm telling you, the fabrics are going to change your life. If you're like me and you look comfy, wumpy, but you also want to hide your puffy nipples, Mac Weldon is the place for you. Or like, or like, it was funny, like being in PT school and like physical therapy school and like learning about like all the organs and like yeah. things like deep within the body. Like, there's a part of your organs that comes. I think it's I forgot. It's like what organ song, but it's 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 called the eyelets of Langer hands, and that's the thing. And it would be funny because like you would just be, we would like joke around, be like, "How you doing today?" Back, like, I ate something bad. And I'm feeling feeling the eyelet of Langer hands. <laughs> you know, you would, you would do things like that. I would drop that stuff in in casual conversation all the time. Like, yeah. Oh, you know, you might have a little something on when you have Yeah, yeah, the upper, yeah, lateral epicondylitis, medial epicondylitis. Um, uh, uh, sometimes I'll say nu nucleus pulposus or your annulus fibrosus, which is just your spine. Wow. Yeah, yeah I'll do shit like that. So you're going in and you're thinking, I'm nervous or this is going to be, I, I, were you in the moment? Like, was it like, this is a dream or were I, you? Yeah. I remember I thought that they were lying to me until we actually got to Yankee Stadium and they, it, I was supposed to get dressed. Look in how the, young you look. Yeah. Oh my God. You actually look different. I know, right? <laughs> Dude, I look better there, right? You just look different. I look younger. You look younger. You look more like German there. Yeah. <laughs> Like a, yeah, see, this is me with a GoPro on my head, getting pitches to Mariana Rivera, and I just am whiffing, and I suck. Was there a comedy take behind this, or are you trying to hit the ball? So what, what I said, I said I didn't want to make any contact because I said, you know, I'm such a big fan that, God forbid, I hit the ball back at you. Right. You know, and, and then when I was in there with him and they cut this out, I asked him, I said, can you just throw the cutter? Can you throw the cutter, his famous pitch at me? And he was laughing. He goes, I, I, you know, I don't know. And, and there he's was not sixty feet from you. No. And there was a woman. There was a woman, uh, like a Yankee, the woman running this thing, like through the Yankees press or whatever, who said to me, who was like standing off to the side, and he was like, um, he was like, oh, can I throw the cutter? And she was like, I don't know. She was like, you know, it's a liability, you know, like if you hit him or whatever. And then I was like, you know, you could just throw it. And she was like, I, you really shouldn't throw it. Because she oh, goes, lady. I know, because she goes, you really shouldn't throw it. Like, you don't know where it could end up. And then he sat there, he said, hand to God. <laughs> that's Sway, him, that's him. Yeah. Sway, he goes, he goes, uh, Sway was right there. He goes, uh, Marion Rivera, sister woman. He goes, I'm Marion Rivera. I can place it wherever you want me to. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he threw it 95 miles an hour at my chin. And I took a swing and missed. And they cut it because she felt like it was. Oh it, my! It could be taken god. as dangerous, even though the whole everybody was crowding around like this guy's going to throw the cutter at this Oh kid. my god! Yeah, and I, so oh I got god. to see as a you know guy, idiot kid who played barely high school baseball. They threw he threw a Marin of Air through his famous pitch. That's like a at that's my like, face. That's like 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 make like the like dream camp. I felt like a Make a Wish kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I was thing. going there. When I got there. I was like, I, I, was I like, pumped the brakes. I was for like, sure. I wonder if I do have a disease, and they're just how they're going to let me know. <laughs> Yeah, I had the GoPro on my head, and uh, I remember I remember being, like, extremely nervous, but I don't remember a lot of parts about this day. As a matter of fact, I didn't remember any of it until I found the video, like, deep in the archives that somebody sent it to me, and I posted it on Instagram, and I worry about that with me. I've had big things happen, like meeting Mariana Rivera and getting batting practice off him, and I don't have a memory of it. And I don't know why, and it bothers me. Do it's you, wild. Have you had that? Like, because I know you've had so many big things happen in your career now. But have there been things where you're like, I can't believe I don't remember a second of that? Yeah, it happens. It's just weird. It's just I don't think we have enough room up there. Like, do you remember every moment of Madison Square Garden, or are there moments where you're like, oh, I just forgot because it was such an iconic moment? Yeah, I don't remember every moment. It's crazy. I, I, I remember feelings, the feeling. Right. I remember specific, specific moments, but overall, I don't remember every moment. Yeah. That, that happened to me a lot. It happens to me a lot. Yeah, when when I sometimes I remember that something really, 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 really cool happened to me. I'm right. like, oh, why isn't in that in my normal mental Rolodex? Right. Like, why aren't I calling that up at will? Like, yeah. I had to be like, I would have never remembered if I didn't get jogged by, like something. Yeah. Like I saw a video, I saw a note, or I saw a thing. And yeah. I, oh my god! Oh my god! Remember that? Yeah. Like, it just escapes you. Yeah. That's like I went to I literally, uh, three years ago. Go to Wrigley Field, Chicago. This is 2017. Go see Chicago Cubs. I had shows at Chicago. Go see the Chicago Cubs, Wrigley Field. 
And I, I mean, this is my first time ever at Wrigley Field. I'm at like Wrigley freaking Field. Yeah. And it's unbelievable, whatever, talking. We're at Wrigley Field in Chicago. A member of the Chicago Cubs uh, of, 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 that works there, like, you know, walking around goes, oh, Chris, welcome back. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? I had Sal <laughs> done an entire off the bat episode on the field at Wrigley Field with their best player, Anthony Rizzo. I didn't remember a second of it. I thought it was the first was time. I was going there for the first time. I thought it was going there for the first time in 2017. I forgot. Not only, not, hey, babe, not only, <laughs> not only was I at Wrigley Field, I was on the field with their best player who won the NL MVP. That's insane. And I didn't remember. How do you not remember that? And then until they- Shout out Wrigley Field. Shout out Wrigley Field because it was one of those days where we had filmed, it was like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We filmed- uh, you know, in St. Louis, then Pittsburgh, then That's Chicago, and it was just one of those I didn't remember at the most iconic baseball field That's potentially wild. in the league until that, they sn- – yeah. It happens to me with touring because a lot of times what we do is we'll go uh, like on a tour for three weeks straight, right? Whatever it is, yeah. Every night is a new city. And a lot of times if we're on the bus or what have yeah. you, the, the bus pulls up like behind the venue or whatever it is. We go in in an alley. Or yeah. in like a, a, yeah. a service entrance. Yeah. And then we go into the green room. And then when we're ready to go on stage or wherever it is, like this way to the stage. And you don't see the theater before. You only see the stage when you go out there in front of it, packed house. Yes. Usually. Yeah. And so you don't see the empty room. I try, I try to catch the empty room on the way out. If I'm, for some reason, I'm still there after everyone's cleared out. But like, I don't get to see the front of the theater or the awning. And yeah. so I don't have mental snapshots associated to the locations. And so... Right. And then when I'm doing sometimes, you know, 20, 20 nights in a row. Right. And that's the same pattern. And then, like, sometimes we'll do three of those tours a year. Right. You know what I mean? So it's right. like, so then, like, people will be like, oh, we're going to Houston. And I'm like, all right, no, I've been in Houston. And they're like, what venue are you playing? I'll have to, like, look and say, oh, this is the venue. Have you ever been there? And I'm like, I'll maybe, maybe we'll remember when I get there. Right. But I don't necessarily remember. Right. Because I'm not, I'm not experiencing it in a way right. that is is you know so that happens to me all all the, the time. time yeah, yeah it's it's bizarre because i'm like am i not appreciative i know i'm appreciative and i'm so grateful but i'm like uh, do i have a freaking alzheimer's at 35 <laughs> i know you know but i mean yeah. i remember the big 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 moments but yeah what um wait so you so oh, so mo so anyway i end up golfing with him for the day and then right. eating dinner with him and we i just had tons and tons of laughs right and he just he's already just like he's like come back to the house i will barbecue and hang out yeah i was at, like the event i was it was a very small like charity like a pandy charity right event so we had we were masked we were masked up and so right. no it wasn't a pandy charity but it was a charity during pandy Ch- and charity. so we were masked up yeah um and but then it was like we hit it off we were like just just really nice. His whole family was there. He was at his home. Right. You know, it's one of his homes. So, and then, um, and then, so he's like, you know, let's 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 hang again, and like just come back. And I'm like, let's. Yeah. And now, like with the text, you have an amazing home. Like like what you it's would a think be- Mariner Vera lives. Like you're like, wow, it's a beautiful home. I mean, yeah. I, he's got a few of them. I think so. Yeah. I'm not going to talk out of turn, but yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless the man. Yeah. But so one thing, we're on the golf course. Hello, fresh. What's up? Yes, love some HelloFresh. We've talked about it before on the show. I've been cooking with it. I've been using this product. They're great meals. They're calorie uh, uh, low meals. You just you learn how to cook. I've been learning how. To, I can now comfortably say I can cook because of HelloFresh. Okay, twenty five plus recipes to choose from each week. Vegetarian meals to craft burgers, extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy, and that's the truth. There really is because I mean, you know, Jasmine's a, a vegan. My dad, you know, eats animals live, and my daughter, you know, eats macaroni and cheese with ice cream. So I can literally please everybody with HelloFresh. It has a wide variety of easy, delicious options for all, for all three meals a day, plus every snack and special treat in between. So they got snacks, too, because you know me, I'm crazy snacks. So I like a little snacks. I like a little in-between meals because the blood sugar drops a little bit. And HelloFresh is the place for me, and I want it to be the place for you, and we got a great discount here. All you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe12 and use the code HeyBabe12. You're going to get 12 free meals, including free shipping, okay? So they're not trying to get you with the shipping. They're saying including free shipping. All you got to do, hey babe, go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe12 and use the promo code HeyBabe12 for 12 free meals. That's insane. They're going to give you a free meal for every disciple. I love HelloFresh. Hallelujah. I have a rock hard cock. And do you want to know why I have an RHC? 
BlueChew.com. Thank you very much. Rock hard all the time. So many. I'm so hard all the time that it's actually embarrassing. I'm like, <laughs> look at, look at, I have a stiffy. And it's been great. It's been great, especially with COVID and keep six feet away. Well, people are keeping three inches away from me because of BlueChew.com. And listen, here's the thing. A lot of people, you know, guys, listen, we go through, we go through male enhancement stuff. You know, maybe you're a little older or maybe a little younger and you're on steroids. Whatever it is, sometimes it's hard to get your Pishka deal up in the air. Blue, uh, Blue Chew, it uses the same active ingredients as Via- Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form. And I, listen, I'm scared to swallow pills. I'm scared to swallow anything. You know me, I'm a spitter. I don't swallow. Blue Chew makes it chewable. And it's an online prescription service, so you don't have to visit a doctor's office because that's embarrassing to have to state someone face-to-face. That you, you know, you can't get your Woodrow Wilson standing up. This is online. And it's clinical, you know, real clinicians licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive your prescription in days. And the best part, it's all done online. So, uh, um, and it's discreet, dude. Nobody knows. It's not like, oh, boner pills. They don't do that. It's all discreet packaging, which I love. I take it. I take it, okay? And stiffy. What you need to do, we got a deal for you. You got to go to bluechew.com. You got to go to bluechew.com, and you got to put in the promo code, hey, babe. Sorry, okay. Go to bluechew.com. Use the promo code HEYBABE at checkout. All you do is pay the $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code HEYBABE, and you get your first month free. So we literally, all you have to do is go to bluechew.com, promo code HEYBABE, put in the $5 shipping, and we're going to give you a free rock hard cock for a month. That's on us. That's HEYBABE's promise. We want to make you hard for 30 days. Bluechew.com, promo code HEYBABE. Pay the $5 shipping, get the first month free on us, and then the rest of the months that you want to stay hard, you're going to have to pay for it, but you use the promo code Hey Babe, and at least you get a month free. It's great. I'm hard. And he, I found out that he bought a Toyota dealership. Right. And This I is say, public info, the Rivera Toyota yeah, dealership. I said, I said yeah. yeah, Rivera Toyota. And I was like, no way. And I go, let me ask you a question. Do you have to do those like local commercials? Yeah. Like those corny local commercials? He's like, yes, I do. I do them. <laughs> and I haven't seen one, but I was like, do, I said, if you want, I, would, I was with Q. But like we would love to do a, a local Toyota Rivera Toyota commercial for you. Yeah. And he's like, let's do it. Yeah. So we're now working on we're thinking of ideas to do for a he's local He's followed up on this. A, yes, a local <laughs> Toyota Rivera commercial. But if you want to pull up, because then I went home and I we, we I looked up a couple of the commercials yeah. and God bless so, like some are so funny because he doesn't either he doesn't speak or he speaks, but there's this one dude. It's the commercial. One dude, I guess he has a, a, a head salesman there, or maybe yeah. it's a partner. I don't know who the guy is to him that works at Rivera Toyota. And he thought he goes in hard with a rap song. Okay. Okay, it's a local commercial. He goes in super hard with a rap song. Like you could tell the it's a kid that listens to hip hop that wishes he could have been right. a hip hop artist, right. but he's not that. He's like, you know, he's in the suburbs, he, he sells cars and stuff, but he has a passion for hip hop. And I think this is the kid. This is the, the guy. guy. Yeah. He's got and, t- his and, suit wait, wait, is too big. And you could tell that he listens to hip hop because he has like the, the hip hop flair in there, and he's committing in a way that's not like an awkward, like hippity dippity, like how when your parents tried to yeah. do it. But it's like he goes in hard, but like the lyrics are really about like a zero percent financing. Right. And then, <laughs> and then he and you're watching it, you're like, wow, this guy is really. It's almost like it's like, and I might meet him if he still works there. I might I might meet him, and if he sees this, God bless the man. Shout yeah, out, God Rivera, bless him. Shout, shout out Rivera Toyota. Yeah. Shout out this hip hop guy. Yeah. But um. But you could tell it's almost like too. It's like this is my chance to shine in front of Mo, like mom spaghetti yeah. table and thing. And like, and then, and then you think Mariano's gonna say anything, and then Mariano never says a single word. <laughs> Here we go. Here let's, we go. Let's, let's, let's get. You gotta crank this up. For the number one home run, it's Rivera. Won't believe the money Mo saves you at Rivera. If you're looking for a smaller car with a low price, got the Yaris, the Corolla, both cars really nice. Want a nice midsize? You talk about a Camry, number one selling car, great car for the fans. Next up, you get that too. You get an accent, see. right? Yeah. Can beat the gas mileage on these cars. Come and see if one of luxurious full size cars. Just looking at Avalon. him. Avalon, it's unbeatable <laughs> by far. If snow when your budget is a prop, get a Rav4, the most affordable all-wheel drive you could ask for. Not many van ready, but need a third row. We got the Highlander all-wheel drive. Let's go. <laughs> With time for the swagger wagon, come get a Sienna. Only all-wheel drive. This is brutal. For the winner, more of an outdoor. <laughs> Type of real out. tough mother, the Tacoma, the Tundra, or the Forerunner. Want luxury and a whole lot of truck? The Sequoia, the Land Cruiser, worth the big bucks at Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he went in, he was even like doing the like, 
you know, like the yeah. old, like you want, like you know, he was like really like feeling himself. And Rivera just said Rivera nothing. Just, uh, by, by the way, billion dollar smile, if I oh, may, absolutely. Mariana. Shout out Mariana's Shout smile. Shout out Mariana Rivera's smile. <laughs> I met when Mariana Rivera, you know, did that, did the off, off the bat uh, show, and then I did the uh, MLB, um, the celebrity uh, All Star game in Minnesota. And my dad came with me. He was a huge baseball fan. Rivera was on the team. He wasn't on my team. He was on the other team. But on my team was Ricky Henderson. <gasps> and Ricky Henderson. What? Yeah, so, and so I was in the batting cages, and Ricky Henderson talks in the third person. So I was in the batting cages, uh, you know, warming up for the game, and my dad's there, and the cameras are there, and then Ricky Henderson starts saying, Ricky Henderson <laughs> would put his weight on the back leg a little more. No. no yeah, I swear he starts no, saying that. No, no, In front no, of my father. No. He goes. But he's telling you. He's telling what me. What he would do. But as he, in his third person. In his third person voice. And he's going, and it, it, as a third person, he's going, Ricky Henderson would put a little bit more weight on that back leg. Then it says that. <laughs> so my dad's like crying that Ricky Henderson's giving his son batting tips. And then he's like, Ricky Henderson would keep his chin tucked. But that's what Ricky Henderson would do. And he keeps saying things like that. And I'm just like laughing, swinging and missing. Then we're on the team. My team is me. Andre Dawson, Mike Piazza, Ricky Henderson, Nelly, um, January wait, Jones. Wait. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Fat Joe. I was like, wait, Nelly? Yeah. Because it, oh, it was a mix. It was a mix. January Jones? January Jones, uh, uh, Nelly, Fat Joe. Yeah, go to, yeah, go to, go to Chris D. Chris, yeah, 2014 Celebrity. You, uh, so, I mean, Andre Dawson? Andre Dawson, like, I mean, Hawk. Yeah. For, I mean, he, Raleigh Fingers. Are you kidding? Are <laughs> yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, you, I mean, just Hall of Famers. Oh, uh, oh, absolute Hall of Fame. Yeah, maybe put MLB uh, or M or, or like go to all too because you get the article. Um, and so, uh, or, yeah, yeah, there we go. Complete roster. Here we go. Let's see. I forgot. We're, go down. Did Nelly have the band aid? Yeah, Andy. What does that mean, by the way, the band aid? I don't know what it means. Oh, I think I read somewhere it was like a tribute to somebody. Yeah, so my team was... Shout out Band-Aids. So it was Andy Cohen, Andre Dawson, James Denton, who was from that show, who was from the Housewives show, Real Housewives on ABC, uh, or Desperate I, Housewives. I never saw it, yeah. Then we got me, Jenny Finch, Raleigh yeah. Fingers, Dwight Gooden, Ricky Henderson, Melanie Dwight Iglesias, Gooden? Fat Joe, Kevin Love, Fred Lynn, Charles McDermott, Maya Moore, Jack Morris, that's the pitcher who I struck out against, wow. I popped up to, Nelly, Dylan O'Brien, Zach Parisi uh, from the Minnesota Wild, Adrian Peterson for the Vikings. Wow. Mike Piazza, Rob Riggle, Ozzy Smith, John Smoltz, Sway, Jim Tomei, and Andrew Zimmerman. Ozzy uh, Zimmern, Smith, uh, the chef. Jim Tomei. But, but, um, the Wizard. The Wizard. So I go 0 for 3. And on the bus ride coming home, we took a bus from the stadium Wait, back to. How, how fast are the, are the softballs coming in? They're throwing. Was it, were, you, were you in your head or was it difficult to hit? It was. I mean, did January Jones get a hit? Not to say, I'm just saying. But January, you, you played baseball. She probably didn't play college she, baseball. I don't remember if January Jones got it. Just what Jenny Finch, who was an Olympic Team USA Olympic uh, pitcher, she was great. Jenny Finch is great. She plays in every All Star game. Um, she. It was embarrassing because I mean, I didn't even like. <laughs> I went 0 for three. The, Nelly's got. Is that Nelly up there? No, who's that? Where? Oh, that's. I don't uh, have my glasses. Yeah, that's that's. Oh, there's me and January Jones. To go up, go up one more. Mikey, there you go. I had my pants wow. too high, but that's me in January Jones. Um, and I look like a loser a little bit, but what can you do? Nah, you look like a young kid, a cute kid with, a, with confidence with his hat back. With. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I look, I have, I have a little, it looks like I have a little penis in that picture, and you I'm did, not saying you, I don't. <laughs> um, the uh, bottom left with the picture of you and Finch? Yeah. You got the thing where you did the hat to the side and back? Yeah, which yeah. is a little corny now looking back, but what can you do? But, um, but yeah, Melanie Iglesias uh, did get a hit, and I didn't. But going back on the bus ride, on the bus ride going back to the hotel, uh, my, I was sitting with my father, and Ricky Henderson and Ozzy Smith were incessantly making fun of me for popping out to the catcher so much that my dad got involved. No. And by the end of it, my dad, <laughs> Ricky Henderson was saying, you should be embarrassed that you, got, you guys got the same last name. And I took my jersey off, and my dad took the jersey off and didn't allow me to wear the jersey because he was embarrassed by the last name on the jersey because I went 0 for 3. Fast forward the next morning, I call my. I wake up with my dad. We're in the same same hotel room. I wake up. My dad's not there. Give him a call. I say, "What's going on?" He goes, "Oh, just out, to, just out to coffee with Ozzy." I said, "What?" My dad went and had coffee <laughs> and a croissant with Ozzy Smith in Minnesota, and they hung out. Still, might have each other's phone numbers to this day. <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah, just having a coffee with Ozzy. We did us. We did um local celebrity uh, at at uh, at the Mets. Single A in, in Coney Island. Oh yeah, uh, the um, what are they? The Brooklyn Cyclones. Yeah, we Cyclones. Yeah, yeah we did this, uh, and we uh, I was uh, the captain of my team was um, uh, uh, 
Not Phil, uh, not Phil Sims. Uh, John. Uh, well, quarterback for the Giants? No, it's Bengals. Oh, uh, Boomer Sison. Boomer Sison. Yeah. Sorry about that, Boomer. Yeah. Uh, shout, you, out, Boomer, shout, shout out Boomer Sison. Boomer Sison. Boomer Sison. Uh, and Q, uh, we we were we were up, and Q made an error, and it was it was a base clearing error. It was loaded bases, oh, it's and it was inside the park grand slam, because <laughs> Q Q fielded a ball. He was talking and didn't want to field a ball that landed fair by first base. He was playing right. first base, and it landed fair, and they thought it was foul. Yeah, and they just picked it up, and for some reason. <laughs> He, for some reason, I think he was caught up in all the hype. He threw the ball to center field. <laughs> yeah, really? Murray was in Murray was in center field. He just threw the ball to Murray. Yeah, it's just and, and the base is cleared. And then Boomer at a charity game because he's so competitive, and that put us down. He literally like hit his glove and just screamed, "Pull your head out of your ass!" <laughs> I swear to God, and it was like sick children and everything yeah, there. Yeah, it was weird. But he just, you know, the guy wants to. That's like when Pete Rose barreled over the catcher and like. <laughs> broke his leg in the All Star game for <laughs> no reason. But I guess if they listen, that that's a double edged sword. It's like these guys Look, get to that level because they're maniacs. It, see that right there? It was um. J- I guess it was. We also did an impractical. By the way, shout out to uh, Gary Perone and the Cyclones. They're awesome with that. Yeah. Uh, uh, this Joker's bobblehead day. Okay. So they made bobbleheads of us. Yeah. And if you look at me, I do not. I look like a Dominican landlord. You look like I look, Sean, like, I look like a Dominican substitute teacher. You know who you look like? You look exactly like Sean King. I do. Pull yes, up Sean King. Yes, That's the yes. Sean King bobblehead. My, my bobblehead is Sal like Volcano. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to get the <laughs> Sean King bobblehead, it's the Sal Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. We should get the bubble. So we're making short oh. king bubble adults here. <laughs> I got a case of them. I would, I would never give them out because it's like. Can we give them out? As these are the short. We made a short king bubble. I hope I have. I, I know I have a few more. We got to give them out a short. I'll scratch my name off the bottom. I and will put Sean and take short king. And then we're going to be holding. Look at this Sean King bobblehead. I mean, in fairness, Q doesn't look like Q-y. The Q looks like Donnie Wahlberg. <laughs> he does. He, does. <laughs> he looks like, he does like, dude, I swear to God, before the words came out of your mouth, I never thought it. But I was going to say, he looks like Donnie Wahlberg. Joe <laughs> looks like Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Joe does look like Pee Wee Herman. Joe looks like Pee Wee Herman. Joe looks like Pee Wee Herman. And Murr looks like Murr. Murr. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe wow, man. they did a terrible job <laughs> on these bobbleheads. I mean, the I si- straight up look like Sean yeah. King's 100 percent. I mean, that is just Sean. They said it's the Sean King bobblehead <laughs> night. I don't know what happened, but it's a Sean King. Yeah, I mean, Brooklyn Cyclone. Shout out. I mean, the worst <laughs> bobbleheads in the game, but great team, great franchise. I mean, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I remember when I saw it too. And look, thank you guys so much. You know, when I, yeah. when I saw it, you know, I can't. I mean, look, I got. I, I can only. If it can't be honest. It can't be anything, right? Yeah. I I hope it didn't. You know, you look at it. You yeah. got to be like, this, this is perfect. Also, I've never once in my life seen you with glasses on. <laughs> no, I wear glasses. Really? Yeah, from time to time. Sometimes I go on a. Sometimes on I the go. Show? I go on a nice run with them. Yeah. Really? Like, sometimes I'll do glasses for like a week or two, and then but there was a season I did them every when I first got my glasses i went to get and the guy was like you need glasses and i was like he's like you need them your whole life you have an astigmatism in each eye and i said what is that and then he just gave me the glasses and i don't wear them all the also, time why do you why does everybody have an animal except you you have a carton of milk no i have I <laughs> what think, is that i think i think i have hand sanitizer but i could be wrong oh uh, which is comes in I'm handy a in the pandy i'm a germaphobe handy right. the, hand, it does come in handy in the pandy it comes in handy in the pandy um is, is, right. is it is it yeah, that's how germ germophobia. They everyone believes that. I, I yeah. mean, I, I really am, but like my bobblehead, <laughs> my bobblehead has yeah. It's hand a Sean King and Donnie Wahlberg and Pee Wee Herman. What does Murr have? I don't understand. Murr didn't have a cat on his shoulder. But Murr didn't have <laughs> Murr didn't have an animal. He's, yeah, he's got a cat on his shoulder. I don't know why. I know what it is. It might be a ferret because we say Murray looks like a ferret. Oh, ferret. Okay. All right. Uh, again, that does again no disrespect Cyclops, but it looks nothing like a ferret. No on disrespect to anybody. Shout no out Sean King. Shout out yeah, Cyclops. Shout out all these. Shout guys. out Bobblehead. Shout yeah. out. No, shout listen. out Purell. Shout out Dogs and Cats. Here's the thing: you did. They did the Impractical Joker Bobblehead Night and True TV and all that, but they just didn't. The, it's not There's the some, actual some, like, I, The person who they asked us to, to 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 sculpt the head, yeah. they, they were just like, just think of what you think he looks like. Yeah, just what it is. Yeah, and so there you go. So there you go, but uh, yeah, I mean, and Q does look like Donnie Wahlberg. He looks like Donnie Wahlberg. 
Oh, uh, my God. All right. Well, listen, that was a, another fun episode of Hey Babe, which yeah. we did not get to anything we wanted to we, talk we about. We didn't get to anything. I know, uh, but, but with yeah, the next but, episode, we're going to get to it. Yeah, yeah, we will. But you did see my mom's taped. Ta- you saw that? We saw. Yeah, we saw. Did we you saw, s- yeah. rifle through those? Because she also puts a plaque of Jesus up right underneath them. There you go. And she's also got, yeah, she's, and which is, which I love is she has the, uh, she has, uses old uh, glass bottles for uh, flower, for flowers. Yeah, which she's, is nice. yes, yes, old glass bottles for flowers. Yeah, this is just everywhere. And picture Jesus everywhere, so don't think. You're not cracking that window open. He's guarding that window. window. Yeah. Believe it or not. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. All right, babe. I, 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 yeah, that flu, we didn't get to anything. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> ChristyComedy.com. Salvolca- at Salvolcano. Yep. At and SalvolcanoComedy.com. And whatever our YouTube name is that we're going to discuss now, because Joe DeRosa just got here. Uh, uh, don't be a fake. Don't be a flake. Don't run away. Feelings, babe.